we come before you this morning. You know that you have a message for each one of us and that you gave that message to Sharon to prepare. And we just ask, Lord, that as we get busy with this video, that the essence of you and your love and your message and your care will fe feature in every single life of the people who watch this. We ask, Lord, that you put your hand over Sharon and Sharon's family, that you bless them, give them peace, because we know they trust in you fully. We just ask that you give them that amazing peace that passes understanding so that they can just witness for you through this new problem that they all have. We thank you for the work she does here, the way you've led her and the way she leads us. And we give her now to you, Lord. We thank you for all your many blessings. Amen. Amen. Good morning. As I stand in for Sharon, I greet you all in the name of Jesus, our Saviour, our Redeemer, our Friend. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 62, and I read from verses 5 to 12, and this is from the Passion Bible. I am standing in absolute stillness, silent before the one I love waiting as long as it takes for him to rescue me. Only God is my saviour, and he will not fail me, for he alone is my safe place. His wrap-round presence always protects me as my champion and defender. There's no risk of failure in God, so why would I let worry paralyse me? Even when troubles multiply around me, God's glory is all around me. His wraparound presence is all I need, for the Lord is my saviour, my hero, my life-giving strength. Join me, everyone. Trust only in God every moment. Tell him of your troubles and pour out your heart longings to him. Believe me when I tell you, he will help you. according to Mark chapter 1 reading from verses 14 to 20 glory to Christ our Savior later on after John was arrested Jesus went into Galilee where he preached God's good news the time promised by God has come at last he announced the kingdom of God is near repent of your sins and believe the good news one day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little further up the shore, Jesus saw Zebedee's sons, James and John, in a boat repairing their nets. He called them at once and they also followed him, leaving their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired men. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord.
collect for today. O oh God of new beginnings, give us courage to turn and joyfully follow you into new adventures of faith through Jesus Christ, our light and our salvation, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Sharon's sermon today is on trust. Our readings today give us a sharp contrast in how people respond to God's calling. Jonah was called to be a prophet to the city of Nineveh, to warn them of God's impending judgment of the pagan world. But instead of going east, he went west and got into a boat. Thereafter follows an adventure of epic proportions, a terrifying storm at sea. He is thrown overboard, swallowed by a whale, and finally thrown up at the very point from which he was running from. Nineveh was a city on the east bank of the Tigris River, near the modern-day Mosul. It was most probably founded by the Babylonians, but rebuilt and fortified by Sennacherib as the capital city of Assyria, only to be destroyed by the Medes in the year 612 BC. Nineveh was a city of conquerors, a major threat to Israel, and Jonah was from a small backwater. A typical Jew hoped that God would judge the enemy nations that persecuted Israel. But God wanted to demonstrate his mercy to the Gentiles as well as Israel. In fact, Israel had been elected for the divine purpose of spreading God's compassion and glory among the nations. The book of Jonah teaches us two things that go hand in hand. Firstly, even God's servants can be blatantly disobedient to God and uncaring towards their fellow people. Jonah is himself an object of God's grace, yet he is guilty of disobeying God and hating the Gentiles. Secondly, the story of Jonah reveals that God is compassionate by nature towards all people, wanting all to repent and avoid judgment. How often don't we respond like Jonah? The world tells us that we can't change the big picture, so just fall in line and make the best living you can for yourself and your family. Our morals and values tell us that we should head east to Nineveh, yet we turn around and walk west and get into the boat with Jonah because it's just too hard, too hard to go against the flow. We don't want to cause waves, so we end up spending time inside the belly of a whale, out of touch with who we really are, our sense of purpose and the grace that has been extended to us. South Africa has become one of the world's most unrestful places political instability, the collapse of the moral fibre of society that causes many people despondency, disillusionment, discouragement and fear. How do we tell the poorest of the poor who line up for a 350 rand grant that corruption will end in South Africa? How do we tell victims of crime and gender-based violence that things will change, it will get better? How do we tell people not to be fearful that South Africa can be a safe place in which to live? How do we tell our children that they will have equal opportunities based on the work that they put in at school or at university? 
how do we convince people that this COVID-19 virus is not a hoax? It is not the government trying to control us. We need to take all the necessary precautions. It is real. We need to wash our hands, wear our masks, and observe social distancing. How do we tell people that vaccines save lives, that they've done away with deadly diseases like polio and smallpox? As we look further afield, we look in horror at the insurrection in America as the capital was overrun by a violent mob which left five people dead. Is this democracy? How do we convince people that climate change is real? What we saw happen when the world was locked down at level five, how air became fresher, water cleaner, pollution lessened, what kind of caretakers are we? The only way we can cope is to hang on to our faith because we trust in a faithful God who, despite all we hear and see, is in control and is working all things together for the good of those who love him. I found this poem based on the gospel that is set for today. It is a day that could be like any other. The water is calm in the moon morning sun, and the gulls thread the air with their singing. The sun is warm on the backs of their necks, as the fishermen bend to their mending. The blunted points of their wooden needles float in, float out of the webbing, create a loop, pinch with finger and thumb, thread the needle through, then around again, tighten the knot, and pick up the next mesh. Calloused hands repeating the operation that has been handed down, father to son, from generation to generation. The net's hole rapidly closes. Conversation weaves in, weaves out while they are working, returning often to talk of a preacher whose words have set their hopes rising. The hopes handed down like the knowledge in their hands, into the very fabric of living. The wind is warm on the cheeks of his face as the preacher comes near with his message. The world is torn, there is brokenness of heart, there are wounds everywhere in creation. But the preacher has news, good news of change, that God's healing love is accessible and he knows that this good news can mend the torn world, can be threaded in every heart's beating. Now the preacher is calling them, calling their names, calling them to take up new labour, calling them to see, with a vision of hope, people gathered in newness of community, one they've helped to build, like a great catch of fish, abundant with fresh possibility. The water is calm in the morning light, and the gulls continue their singing. The sun is warm on the backs of their necks as the fishermen join Christ in his mending. It is a day that is not, and yet it could be, like any other. John the Baptist had been put into prison. His ministry ended, and Jesus's began. John called people to repentance. Jesus' message was this. At last the fulfillment of the age has come. It is time for the realm of God's kingdom to be experienced in all its fullness. Turn your lives back to God and put your trust in the hope-filled gospel. How much easier it would have been for the disciples to continue mending their nests in the warm sunshine. Continue to work with their family and friends. Zebedee was in the business with Simon and Andrew. They owned a boat and had hired a crew. It seems they were wealthy, yet, we are told, they left everything and followed immediately. 
The Gospel for today is both inspiring and worrying. Inspiring because of the immediate response of the disciples, but also worrying because it seems to set such high standards. Leave everything to follow an unknown rabbi in an unknown future immediately? I don't know about you, but I'm not sure how easy it would be to leave family and friends, our home and workplaces, all to make an uncertain future. By the time we'd made our decision, Jesus would have moved on to the next village. We don't know anything about the disciples, their thoughts, their doubts, whether they were religious people or not, or even if they had a sense of adventure. But they followed immediately. Mark uses the word immediately 33 times in his Gospel. By the way, we never hear the word in the book of Jonah. The picture of fishing for people is both continuity and a contrast of their previous work. Simon and Andrew had to, lots to learn before they could proclaim the gospel and become fishers of men. Jesus then calls James and John sons of Zebedee. It's interesting that the name Zebedee means my gift. Zebedee's gift to Jesus, his two sons. Perhaps, like those first disciples, we respond to Jesus' calling in different ways. We follow by becoming a teacher. Perhaps we look out for those in our school who are struggling and offer them extra help. Perhaps we volunteer at an old age home and spend time with the elderly, the frail and the lonely. Perhaps by doing the job we love, we help others. Perhaps by doing the job that we don't love, but that enables us to provide for our families, we are following. We follow by being generous with our time, our talents and our wealth. Perhaps we follow by listening to the words of others, by showing compassion and care. It may not feel as though we are following immediately. But there are numbers of ways of following Jesus here and now in the way we live in the world. Isn't that what the heart of what it means to be a Christian? To try and live as Jesus did. To treat others as Jesus did. Loving, forgiving, healing. We think often of the idea that we need to give up everything and follow where no one else wants to go. That following Jesus will make us miserable. Nothing could be further from the truth. The words of this song always makes me smile. Please don't send me to Africa. I don't think I've got what it takes. I'm just a man, I'm not Tarzan. Don't like lions, gorillas or snakes. I'll serve you here in suburbia in my comfortable middle-class life. But please don't send me out into the bush where the natives are restless at night. God will always treat us as a beloved child, yet whether or not we try and live and act as a beloved child and receive the joy of acting like one will depend on whether we try to follow Jesus and trust God to bring peace, justice and equality in the world. Paul invites us to detach ourselves from the material possessions of this world and to fix our focus on God. The world requires that we encourage, inspire and proclaim a message of hope to people. The psalmist tells us who we can go to for refuge, tells us who can save us, God alone. The psalmist says, we should trust God with our dreams, our future visions, our nation's aspirations. Trusting God in all these aspects of our lives are a sign of mature faith. Jesus still calls to each one of us, follow me. Our cluttered lives can easily leave out the Lord. We miss his voice, the complexity of stuff causes us to miss the simplicity of Christ. 
Cut down the number of engagements into your diary so that you have time for intimacy with our Heavenly Father and time for those you love. Listen. Do you hear him calling? Do you hear him calling your name? Amen. prayers. Holy Spirit, giver of life, we are created to become whole in you and share this life with our brothers and sisters. Awaken in each of us your compassion and love. Give us strength and courage to work for justice in our neighbourhoods, to create peace within our families, to comfort the sick and the dying, and to share all we have with those in need. We pray for the transformation of every heart as we respond to your calling to follow and share the hope-filled gospel. Amen. Father, for all you have given us, we thank you. For all that you have revealed to us, we praise you. For all that you have commanded us, we pledge our obedience. For all that you have called us to be, we commit ourselves. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us now and forever. Amen. Amen.